Ever since I can remember, we've always had one of those old vintage Parker Brother Ouija boards sitting in our closet collecting dust. When I was a kid, I always wondered what it was. From the box, it seemed like a horrible board game, until one day I found out what a Ouija board really is, and immediately dug it out of the closet. I insisted on my brother trying it out with me, and eventually got him to play along. We put our hands on the planchette, and I began asking the typical cliché questions like, is there anybody there, and can you answer me? Other than my brother jokingly moving the planchette around to imitate an answer from some kind of entity, there was no real response. After getting bored, we put the game back in the box. I did a little research that night to find out how to make Ouija boards work. Many people said online that the most ideal environment when using a Ouija board is in a dark room only lit by candles. So when my parents weren't home, I managed to gather like six or seven candles and convinced my brother to try it one more time. I lit the candles and set them around the table in the dining room with all the lights out. We tried one more time. I asked again if there was anybody there. The planchette began to move. I told my brother to stop moving it, but he swore he wasn't. I told him to move his hand away, and he did. It kept moving. My brother thought I was messing with him, but I didn't pay attention. The planchette landed on the word, yes. I was only nine, so I was legitimately shitting myself. My older brother had to take over. He asked the question, are you a good spirit? There was a five second pause before my brother's hand moved along with the planchette to the word, no. We both looked at each other, and at this point I ran to my room and shut the door behind me, but he continued on with the so-called game. I heard his muffled voice come from down in the dining room, when all of a sudden I heard him screaming at the top of his lungs. I ran back downstairs to see what was wrong. He was holding up his shirt, revealing a small open wound that almost looked like a claw mark. He told me to set the fireplace immediately, and I obeyed. He threw the thing in the fireplace and told me to never speak of what happened to anybody. We have never used a Ouija board since. I got a call from my cousin who said that he, his brother, his dad, and his best friend were using a Ouija board in their basement. Prior to starting, they took a large porcelain doll out of the room because it was creepy and placed it in the adjacent room face down on a pile of towels. My cousin took a short break because the board was just spouting nonsense and he had to go to the bathroom. His dad and brother and friends started asking the board questions without him. One of the questions was, who is in the other room? It just started spouting random numbers, and when my cousin came back into the room, his brother said that it wasn't working, that they were going to put it away, and he showed him the answer to the last question he asked, and he said, Dude, that's my social security number. Then they started to talk to whatever started spewing answers out. It told my cousin he would die in the Air Force. At this point, they tell the entity they're communicating with to prove itself. It then spelled out the word, Dal and they immediately got a bad feeling. They opened the door to check on the porcelain doll they had laid in the other room, and when they opened the door, the doll was standing up right in front of the door, staring at them. Everyone freaked out and ran out of the house. His best friend burned the Ouija board, and I think he temporarily went nuts for a few months. My cousin, for some reason, then joined the Air Force, and is on a base in Europe now. I had some of my friends over one night, so we tried out the Ouija board we found in someone's garbage. It had the board and the glass piece that you hold on to. The four of us held on to the piece and asked stupid questions just messing around. At all times, one of us were moving around the glass piece just to try and fool the others. When one of my friends went to the bathroom and the other got bored, it was just me and one of my other friends still holding on to it. I asked the board when I will die and the piece started slowly moving to the letter T. I laughed, looking at my friend, thinking it was him, but he just told me that he thought it was me. The piece then moved to the letter O, and then M, and then back to O, and then R, and then I realized that it was spelling out the word tomorrow. My friend let go of it, and it stopped moving, so I was convinced that it was him, but he swore left and right it wasn't him. But here's where it gets horrifying. The next day, while walking my dog to the preserve, 
My dog's collar suddenly snaps and he was free from the leash. He darted into the road and I immediately chased after him, only to hear the horn of an oncoming car blaring and getting louder. I dove as fast as I could out of the way, just barely grazing the car with my foot as it passed. But it didn't end there. The same day, while sitting under the ceiling fan in the kitchen on full blast, I got up to get something out of the fridge, and behind me, I heard a loud crashing sound as all the glass on the table was shattered and everything fell onto the floor. The fan had fallen off the ceiling, and I was inches away from being decapitated. I really don't know if I find it to be a coincidence that the day after the Ouija board said I would die the next day, that I had two near-death experiences. All I know is I'm never touching a Ouija board again. I have never really told people about this. We had a huge closet full of old board games, and one of them happened to be a Ouija board. I always wanted to try it out, but my family was always home, and I felt weird trying it in front of them. There was this one weekend that my parents were going to the city, and my brother was going on a Boy Scout campout, so I would have the whole house to myself for a weekend. It might have been pathetic that I was more excited to try out a Ouija board than to party with friends while the house was empty. The weather was terrible, windy and rainy, but I felt that a rainy night would actually make it more ritualistic. Around midnight, I set up the board in my dining room and dimmed the lights. I asked a bunch of questions that generated no answers, so I eventually put the board away and went to bed. I woke up in the middle of the night to hear a creaking noise downstairs by the front door. At first I thought nothing of it, but then I heard it again, and it was closer this time, closer to the stairs. I sat up now. At this point, I was getting concerned. Another creaking sound, this time from one of the stairs. I was sure somebody was in my house. This was before cell phones were mainstream, so calling the police wasn't even an option. The creaking sounds were getting closer until they were right outside my door, and then they just stopped. It felt like hours while I laid there clutching my covers, waiting for something to happen. A huge strike of lightning momentarily lit up my bedroom, and I swore I could see some kind of black, limb-type objects wrapped around the open door. I tried to hold my breath to be as quiet as possible, but what happened next was the worst part. My door suddenly slammed shut, and I couldn't help but let out a shriek. By now, I was completely under my covers, shaking and crying and wanting to scream. All the windows in the house were closed, so there was no draft. I just knew something was going to happen. But nothing happened. I sat under my covers for hours, thinking somebody or something was in the room with me. When the sun started to rise, I finally snuck a peek out of my covers. My room was just as empty as before. I somehow found the courage to leave my bedroom and search for any signs of a break-in. Everything looked normal, though. No broken windows or unlocked doors. I then spotted the Ouija board on the table again. I have always been kind of superstitious, so I immediately linked the happenings to the Ouija board. I chucked the damn thing in the outside trash can and brought it out front to the curb. Since then, nothing has happened, and I didn't tell anybody about it. You wouldn't understand unless you were in that kind of situation. Then you would agree that nobody would believe a word you say. Nobody really knows except for the people that read my story online. I know for a fact that those events were linked to the Ouija board. I can tell you from personal experience that trying a Ouija board is a huge mistake. It was the summer of 2013. My friend had a vintage Ouija board that was allegedly worth a decent amount of money. My friend agreed to trade it with me for a video game that I never played so I happily made the trade. I tried using it alone, but it proved to be just a scam. I didn't really expect it to work. I mainly got it just for the money to be made off of it. I threw the stupid thing on the floor of my living room and forgot about it. Everything was going normal until the next morning. I woke up and found that the two plants I had sitting on my coffee table had been knocked over, and the Ouija board was sitting on the table I didn't remember putting it there, nor did I understand how the plants could have fallen over. Wind was definitely not an answer. I wondered if it was possible that I had sleepwalked, 
Or maybe I was half awake and walked down to get a glass of water and bumped into them or something. I moved everything back in place, but the carpet already had dirt stains on it. I brought the Ouija board box up to my room and tossed it on the floor. Things got bad that night. While laying awake in the dark, I was disturbed by the sound of a muffled click. I looked up, not sure what it was, and then I saw through the cracks of my closet door that my closet light was on. I had no idea how it could have turned on, but I got up and opened the closet door anyway. There was nobody in there, but that hadn't even crossed my mind. I turned the light off and jumped back into bed. Probably ten minutes later, I heard the same clicking sound. Naturally, I looked to the closet and felt my heart sink a little. The closet light was on again. A mix of confusion and fear started building up inside of me. I once again turned off the light and cautiously got back in my bed. I found myself waiting for the closet light to click on again, but what happened instead was much worse. Instead of the closet light turning on, the whole room suddenly filled with light as I heard the main light switch flick on. I had seen enough and was out the door within seconds. I quickly pieced things together and chucked that old Ouija board in the closest dumpster. Nothing weird ever happened after that. <laughs>